Okay, to solve scientific problems, it is always important to use information of a high quality. Explain three criteria that must be important when selecting information to solve scientific problems. Nine marks. Alright, so we are good. Accuracy, um, currency, and reliability. Alright, accuracy. The information that is used must be uh, measured properly and proper checks put in place to ensure correct values example calibrating instruments before taking measurements yep. calibrating information right. currency the latest information should be gathered on the problem so that any conclusions made would um would be um would be up to date with the latest findings. Example um reaction to certain um diseases. Classical diseases, right. diseases. Then reliability the, mm, the information um should be could come from from referred sources so that it can be um, used for research if it is not reliable the conclusion may be wrong conclusions drawn may be wrong right so accuracy currency reliability um there are others i could use once you explain it properly and you tie it back to the scenario, it must tie it back to the scenario. Um, all right, part B, Adriano would like to open a nightclub in a rural neighborhood. He was advised not to do so by many of his friends and business advisors. Outline one piece of information for each of the following categories that his friends may have shared with him. Um, essential. He also open a nightclub in a rural neighborhood. Essential would be the population of the neighborhood um knowing that only a few people live there you could basically make up anything for this but essential basically the population the fact that it's a rural neighborhood you want to look at the fact that you know it's only have a lot of people there um yeah. desirable desirable could be the transport to and from the neighborhood is difficult uh, to get and costly yeah difficult to get and costly <laughs> cosmetic um cosmetic um wow open a nightclub in a rural neighborhood i can feel i can talk about the road the road to get there uh, not yeah. properly and how no white line anything that describing describing some sort of you know, some sort of way how looking and feeling yeah uh, <laughs> Since it's so open-ended, you really have so much other things to choose from. And extraneous. List one other category of information not mentioned is extraneous. Yeah. Um, well, they, they're trying to tell him not to go in our neighborhood, so... Or how desirable they, they, they're trying to tell him if you were to do it, where to put it, yeah. Alright, yeah, that's cool. I'll count it. But it's, it's it heavily, heavily open-ended. Heavily open-ended. Alright. An automated car parking system allows drivers to purchase a ticket by entering the type of vehicle they are driving and the expected length of stay. This information is used to calculate the cost of the ticket, which is then printed and given to the driver. The parking database is then updated. Draw a context diagram for the system above. Right, so let's go. Automatic car parking system allows drivers, so driver external entity, driver purchases the tickets by entering the type of vehicle that they are driving. So a piece of data would be, piece of data would be the type of vehicle that they are driving and the expected length of stay. That's the two pieces of data that they're putting in. This information is used to calculate the cost of the ticket, so that means the, the process is calculate cost of the tickets and then which is then printed and given to the driver so the ticket is printed ticket is printed and given to the driver so that's the data that's passing back then the parking database is then updated so the database is then updated with some stuff all right cool let's go we have a driver which is our external entity the driver sends in type of vehicle and length of stay and then this is calculate cost of tickets and the ticket is printed and given to the driver and the parking database is updated with the ticket info yep i'll say ticket info all right cool uh, 
Dead Eyes are nine marks for that boy. But they're giving away marks here, boy. I can't even see six marks in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know. Nine marks here. Crazy. All right, various programming paradigms, languages, and constructs are used to create a computer. Let's do programming paradigms. You have um, procedural, object oriented, functional, and decorated. List one programming language for each of the paradigms listed in A part one above. All right, procedural will be C or Pascal, object oriented would be Java and C. Straightforward. Functional, I think you'll get like um, Prolog and, and Lisp. This band for long. Outline two programming constructs found in programming languages. Okay. C Lection. The choice of two of two um, outcome based on the state of a variable. Example and then else. Then there is looping, which is the repetition of a set of commands based on the state of a variable. Alright, the figure below shows the flowchart for part of an algorithm. Okay, read A, B, if A is greater than B, yes or no. If it's no, okay, let's print it. Right. See the values that are printed when the following values are read for A and B. So A is 4, B is 5. So A is 4, B is 5. Is 4 greater than 5? No, it is not. So therefore, we're going to say A is equal to A, which is 4 plus 5 by 2. 5 is 10 plus 4, so A will be 14. So it will print 14 and 5, because the B will still be 5. B never change. All right, so then if we get 2 and 1, what will happen if you get 2 and 1? Is 2 greater than 1? Yes, so therefore, A is equal to 2 plus 1. So A is equal to 3. So we're going to print, print. 3 and 1. Yep, seems legit. Yeah, boy, they're all giving away marks in this module, but like, they, it's for free. Write the pseudo code for the algorithm shown on page 16. Nah, 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 I can't believe they're asking this. Is form tree work here, boy? Print A, comma, B. Better. No, that's read A or B, sorry. Read A, or A and B. If A is greater than B, then if A is greater than B, then a is equal to a plus b else a is equal to a plus b multiplied by and and print a comma b nah man this is giving away marks here boy this mark came up you watch these questions and laugh happiness say to yourself oh i don't mind if i do partake in some some cake today yeah boy it's how does insult come size students intelligence Extend the pseudocode to allow for 10 sets of values for A and B to be entered. Extend, you say? For 10 sets of values. Okay, if that's what you want, if I'm going to extend it for 10 sets of values, I just had to create a for loop. I'm taking this if here. And I'm creating a. Oh, I'm taking the whole thing? Yeah, I'm taking the whole thing. A and B. So, or C is equal to 1, 2, 10, do. And four, I, I believe that's what I want. Yeah, it looks like that's what I want. Yeah, just to look this thing ten times. Wow, I don't know what to say right now. So, four C is one to ten. You read the E and B, and this process will happen ten times. Yeah, well, I think that is actually it. Five marks of point in our four loop. Extend the pseudo code in B part one above to show to allow for ten sets of values for A and B to be entered.